Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to review the properties of the laws of exponents. We'll talk about characteristics of exponential functions and we'll do some transformations of exponential functions. And you'll see those transformations are gonna be very similar to what we have previously done. So quick review here of the properties or our laws of exponents. If A, B, M, and N are real numbers with A greater than zero and B is greater than zero, then we know that if we have A times B raised to a power, we can, for lack of a better term, talk about distributing that M to both the A and the B. But we can only do this with multiplication, and we can do that again with division over here where we impose the exponent on both the numerator and denominator. However, when you have addition or subtraction, you may not distribute that M. That is a huge no-no, okay? We cannot do that if we have addition or subtraction. In fact, that would be a binomial expansion, uh, which we just recently studied. Other laws of exponents, if we have a power raised to a power, we multiply our exponents. So this would be this particular one, a power raised to a power. And then when we have the same base and we multiply those together, we don't multiply the bases, we just add the exponents. And in fact, that law of exponents leads to b to the negative n, which would mean our n value is greater than m, so or m is less than n here. We end up with b to the negative n equals one over b to the n. So a negative exponent is a fraction and not a negative number. And then our final example over here on the lower left, one over b to the k, might go back to our power over root, power over root, so that's the act or the kth root of b. In example one, we want to evaluate each number to three decimal places. We will use our calculator for this. So five raised to the two thirds, or pardon me, to the 2.3, we'll go to our calculator and take five, and then we'll use the caret key raised to the 2.3, enter, and we get 40.516. In example B, three raised to the square root of seven, we're gonna do the same kind of thing. Go to our calculator, We'll take our base three and do our caret and we'll raise to the square root of seven. So the square root key is above the x squared. So second square root of seven, enter, and we get 18.295. And in our final sample, c is six to the negative 1.5. I go back to my calculator, six, all raised, and I'm gonna use parentheses, the negative symbol, 1.5 or negative three halves. Now that is a, not a negative number, that's just gonna be a small number, that's a reciprocal, and I hit enter, and sure enough, I get 0 .068, which is indeed a small number. So I fill those in, I did each of those to three decimal places. And now we'll take a look at characteristics of exponential functions in the form of fx equals b to the x. A lot of this stuff we've already covered. The domain consists of all real numbers and the range consists of all positive real numbers. So if you remember your graph of an exponential function, the graph of an exponential growth function looks something like that. We had a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, so our range was all the y is greater than or equal to zero. So the graphs of all exponential functions pass through the point zero one. So that was our y-intercept, at least for our base function until we started messing with the coefficient a in front of that. Because anything to the zero power is one, so the y-intercept would be the ordered pair zero one. If b is greater than one, our function or our base is greater than one, our function is increasing, it's continuous and concave up. It is a growth function. And if B is a fraction between zero and one, our function is decreasing. 
and it's continuous and concave up as well, but will look something like that blue graph, and that is an example of a decay function. The graph of y equals b to the x approaches, but not does not cross the x-axis. The x-axis is our horizontal asymptote, which would be y equals zero. And b to the x is one to one and has an inverse that is a function, and we will learn later on that those inverse functions are logarithmic functions. In example two, we're gonna graph our function f of x equals two to the x. I'm gonna do that guy in blue. And g of x equals one half raised to the x. I did that guy in red. And we'll talk about the relationships of those. So g of x equals one half to the x, that is a decay function, a half-life if you will. And that is gonna be a decreasing function. It's gonna go through the point zero one and is gonna look something like that. And two to the x will be exponential growth. It'll also go through zero, one, and use the plots I, points I plotted in advance, it will look something like that. So what can we conclude about those? Well, y equals one half raised to the x is also the same as y equals two raised to the negative x, because a negative exponent is a fraction, so that would change our base. Um, it is a reflection of two to the x across the y axis. Now let's take a look at transformations of exponential functions. Our standard form, if you will, f of x equals a times b to the x minus h plus k, where our x is up in the exponent here. And uh, anything that's grouped with the x's is gonna be move us along the horizontal axis or will be changes in x. And like our a value and our k value, those are gonna be the changes in our y's, or would even be a reflection, if we make that negative, would be a reflection across the y axis. So a vertical translation, we were just adding or subtracting k, so those are gonna change our y's, if you will, and plus four would shift four units up, minus five would shift five units down, so the same as our sign. However, in the x's, it's always the opposite, isn't it? So x minus h is x minus a positive h that would move us three units to the right here with two to the x minus three and f of x plus h. Now that's gonna be like x minus a minus six and that's gonna move us six units to the left. So those are horizontal transla translations. A vertical, vertical dilation, our a is outside of our f of x here, so that's gonna impact our y's. So sure enough, if we make a three, it's gonna stretch our y's by three. We're gonna go up three times as high, or we'll shrink it one half. We'll only go half as high for every one. A horizontal dilation, on the other hand, is changing the coefficient on the x that's inside the parentheses. So like this one fourth, We'll stretch it by four units across the, along the horizontal x-axis, or three will shrink it by one-third along the x-axis. And our reflections, the negative is outside the x's, so that's going to be, uh, it's going to reflect across the x-axis, meaning it's going to change, that's going to change our y's. And when we change our y's, sure enough, when we reflect across the x-axis. Whereas negative x, we're gonna reflect across the y-axis. Positive x, a positive x becomes a negative x. So that's gonna be a reflection across the y-axis. In example three, 
we've got a function f of x equals 3 to the x is on the grid at the right that is in blue um, so plotting that 3 to the negative 2 is 1 ninth and then we have 1 third when x is negative 1 we're at 1 third when x is 0 we get an output of 1 when x is 1 we get an output of 3 when x is 2 we get an output of 9 so we've got our exponential growth function with base 3 or if you will a tripling and then then what we're doing in red is we're doing 3 to the x plus 2 so that becomes 3 to the 0 which is 1 so when I input negative 2 I output 1 essentially what we've done is we've taken this point and we have shifted it two units to the left and then 3 to the negative 1 plus 2 is 3 to the 1 or 3 so when x is negative 1 y is 3 we've taken that blue point and we've shifted it two units to the left and then when x is 0 y is 3 to the second or 9 so that's that red point and we've taken this point and we've shifted it two units to the left so 3 to the x plus 2 is a horizontal shift of two units to the left and it gives us that particular graph so we end up with some important points here like 0 9 and instead of 0 1 we'll have to take a look at the algebra behind that and um, this point here at negative 2 1 which is a shift of the blue 0 1 which is our base point so example 4 says show that the function g of x equals 3 to the x plus 2 so the one we just worked with here can be written in the form h of x equals a times b to the x using the transformation properties in the table above describe the transformation of the y-intercept from the parent function for g of x and h of x so the parent function here is in blue so let's see what happens here so g of x is equal to 3 to the x plus 2 using our properties of exponents a power times a power we add the exponents this is actually the equivalent of 3 to the x times 3 to the second right because we have the same base we add the exponents which gives us 3 to the x plus 2 so the second step here is the equivalent of the first well 3 squared is 9 so I'm going to put that in front and that becomes 9 times 3 to the x now we might think that's 27 to the x but is not we have to apply this is 9 to the first and uh, we can't add, multiply those bases together so don't make that 27 to the x so it's just 9 times 3 raised to the x power so that is now our new function h of x so g of x shifts the graph our original graph f of x two units to the left right that's our red graph the y-intercept of f of x was 0 1 but it got shifted okay y-intercept was 0 1 that's the y-intercept on f of x was 0 1 and it was shifted to negative 2 1 our x is changed by two units and the other thing that happened is now it became 0 9 and that we saw right here so because of the shifting of the two units left the point 2 9 now became the point 0 9 on our new function g of x 
and we'll get some more practice with these transformations when I see you in class.